Lucida Hurtado Mulligan, you've been just about everything. You're an artist, you're the widow of artist Lee Mulligan, you're the mother of artist Matt Mulligan, and grandmother probably to budding artists. I'm sure. Yes, they're very talented, my grandchildren. They're seven years old, and, uh, and they, they make wonderful drawings. They, they have, uh, my son has them pinned all over the house, and, and uh, I sometimes steal them. <laughs> so it's going to be three generations? I think so. Lucina, how have you mixed all these professions? You, you, you've mixed being an artist, you know, wife and mother, which is usually a full-time job. Yeah, um, yeah. How, how have all these things Well, I've neglected a lot of my art. I really uh, have. I really have. I, I have, um, well, I've always drawn. I, I always draw. But painting um, is something else. I, I stopped painting when, when the children were young. And yet, I went on, you know, I had a studio, and then I would stop, and then when the kids went to school, because they were all 11 years apart, you see. So I, <laughs> I had these, these moments of <laughs> back at school, back to the baby, back. <laughs> so, but it worked, it worked. I was happy, and Lee was happy, and everybody was happy, so well, it go, worked. Sorry, going back before that, yeah. Um, in Venezuela, were you, were you always going to be an artist? I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to build bridges. It all was so, you know, a challenge. I, I thought it was great. I don't think I could have ever made it because I have no head for math or numbers or any of that. But it was a kind of dream. And when I told my mother, you know, that I'd like to be an engineer, she said, that's not a woman's profession, you know. She never really um, liked me being an artist either. Most parents so, don't. No. Well, nowadays they do, you see. The times have changed. Uh, not long ago. I mean, it wasn't such a, no, yeah. acceptable. Yeah. When, did, when did you come to the States from Venezuela? When I was 12. I went to New York, my mother and my sister, yeah. and, uh, and then I married at a very early age. I had two children from my first marriage, and one died. One died in Mexico, and um, I think that probably was instrumental also in, in uh, Pollen and our, our marriage mm -hmm. falling now apart. Now that was Wolfgang Pollen. Yes. Pollen was my second husband, uh -huh. you see. And you met him out here in California? I met him in New York. Uh -huh. But then uh, we married. I went to live in Mexico. I, in, we, we married in Mexico. From, from Mexico, Pollen and I went to um, Mill Valley, San, San Francisco, close to San Francisco. Gordon Onslow Ford and Jacqueline had moved to back she was from San Francisco, so they went, they were living in Mexico, everybody was in Mexico. So then Onslow Ford decided to, um, to move to San Francisco. They, had, they, gave, they sold their house in Mexico. And, um, and then when my son died, we decided to leave Mexico also. And so we went to, uh, we visited. We didn't know where to go, whether to go to France or, or where to go. So we went to see Onslow Ford, and we saw this wonderful house, an old Victorian house in Mill Valley, and bought it. Was Onslow so. Ford living in, on the ferry then? Onslow Ford? Was Onslow Ford living on the ferry? Had he bought the ferry then? Yes, yes. He had the ferry then, and uh, he wasn't living in the ferry. They were living in San Francisco proper. And when we left, Onslow Ford um, lived, bought our house from us. Let's leave the ferry for a sec and go back to Mexico. Why was it that there were so many artists in Mexico at that time? 
Well, I, I think uh, Leonora Carrington was there, Remedios was there, and people came to the house. We, we were constantly visited by people uh, from the States, from Europe. Um, and it, it's really a very extraordinary place, Mexico. I think especially for Europeans. There were quite a few Europeans. Pollen's uh, uh, very close friend, Regler, was, uh, was German. What, what do you think attracted Pollen to Mexico City and, and that environs at that I, time? I think probably it was um, the, um, the pre-Columbian art the, well, you know, Mexico City is, a, is, is really, Mexico on the whole, is a very magic place. It's, it has all kinds of challenges, you know, and it's beautiful. The people are beautiful, and the, the whole, the earth is, is strong, and there's a certain violence, especially in the, in the valley of Mexico, you know, you understand the goddess of the earth, the um, pre-Columbian goddess of the earth, the Aztec goddess of the earth, has um, eagle claws as feet and hands, you know, and, and uh, she, she wears this skirt of rattlesnakes and a death skull for a head. I mean, this is the earth. It's, it's, it's really strong. And uh, One of the things that fascinated me about you reading your interview with the Archives of American Art was your discussion of your own powers. And you share with my wife a, a great sense of smell, or you did. Oh, yes, uh, I do. She has an exceptional sense of smell. Yeah. But beyond that, you seem to also feel that you possess other extrasensory and sensory powers. Um, and so a person such as yourself, I think, in that kind of an environment would have a feeling for, for the difference, for what there was about Mexico. Oh, yes. Oh, you, you feel it. Oh, it's, it's very strong there. Another thing that I didn't know that I wanted to bring up was this trip you took to see the San Lorenzo. And, oh, and you yes. Took, the took big photos. Heads. The big heads. And they were, which were subsequently published in the Calle Yeah, Art. Calle da. Uh, according to your interview, you this was a brand new experience taking a photo. Yes. <laughs> You'd just been given this camera and then you, you went out into this major new discovery and snapped pictures. Yes, I did, yes. And, and, well, you know, uh, Pollen did get you to do things that you didn't know you could do. He would say, you know, here's the camera, take a picture. And that was, that was kind of, uh, there was no question about that you couldn't, or you couldn't, you know. You just did. <laughs> oh, one of the things that I was drawn to, getting back to this extrasensory and sensory yeah. power that you have, um, for instance, with pollen in Mexico, you said that it was possible for you to detect the presence. The f you had the feeling that there was something in one of these little towns. Yes, that, and that I he find would be it. In or, and, and then you would go out and find it. Yes. And, of course, that would be a collector's delight to have somebody like that. It would be like a seeing eye dog <laughs> or something. But beyond that, I was struck by the similarities in the ways in which Mulliken and Pollen both were drawn to the inspiration of these ancient peoples yes, and of these yes, sites. the ancestors. And it occurred to me that if you were drawn to that and you could find a woman who had an ability to sense these things, <laughs> You, you really had something. Yes. And I yeah. think both of them were smart enough to realize that they really had something. <laughs> and I, I wonder if there is indeed a relationship there, something that you brought to the equation that they didn't in themselves possess some way in which I know that artists and their spouses often share a way of looking at things and, and sensing mm -hmm. the environment around them. And mm -hmm. I just I wondered if there's something of that nature that you brought to the marriage that, that benefited both of well, them. Well, I think I, I think uh, I think both of us um, sort of recognized, you know, the passion in the other, the, the 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 appreciation for these objects, for this for these these cultures, for you know the the whole mystery of it, the the beauty of it, and uh, uh, it, it, with Lee, for instance, you know, 
we lived in Rome for a year, and we t we always would uh, would go to the Sunday market in Rome. The the um, uh, Campo, it was near the Campo de Fiori, but it wasn't called Campo, I forget what it was called, the flea market, every Sunday. And he would go one way and I would go the other. Invariably, we would go for the same thing. And either he would buy something that I had seen and been tempted by, or I would buy something, you know. It was a very strange kind of thing. It always worked that way. And, uh, and we'd go into a store and go for, you know, directly to the same thing. Luchita, so. let's go back a minute so I can get a sequence. Paul, you and Paulin went to San Francisco. Yeah. Now, when did he leave the scene? <laughs> In other words, when, when well, that's did you where split I met Lee. and then, that's then where, went to That's Lee. where I met Lee, you see. I got it. Okay. That's where I'm at. Being. So then that next chapter came And up. And then, you see, then, then the, the Dynaton came on. You see, there was this big show yeah. at the museum. And how, can you back up? And, and how did that begin? The three guys... Well, it began with Gordon being in San Francisco. Uh -huh. And then um, they, uh, I don't know, Pollen arrived. And... Uh, they decided, he met Lee, and the three of them got together, and there was uh, much talk, and let's have a show, and they, t they, they saw each other constantly. Because it became a movement. It became their movement. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It was just the three artists, you see. What role did Grace Morley play in Grace was the Grace show? was then the, the director of the museum, and she was very involved in it. And she approved of this whole, I mean, they had long, long conversations. And uh, it was all evolved. It evolved there. How and long became a thing. Did, Dina t did the movement last, the exhibition? While we were, in, in the, while we were together in, in San Francisco. And then when one of them moved, then it broke up? And never to be well, seen again? I, well, you see that, that yeah, Pollen went off to Paris. I went off to New Mexico, and Lee went off to Oklahoma. I mean, so. And then when And Gordon on Slow Ford was the one that stayed in uh -huh. San Francisco, you see. And Gordon went on painting. Everybody went on painting. And they still had shows. They still shared a great deal. But it was not that kind of daily... Yeah, structured kind of mm -hmm. a thing. Um, okay, Lee went to Oklahoma. You went to Santa Fe. Where, d where did you meet up again? I always like to no, know Lee, this. All right, Lee and I took off together. Uh-huh. And so we spent the summer in, um, in Santa Fe, you see. With I, I, at that point, I had one son who was... Um, ten years old, and uh, and then um, I was halfway to New York, and I thought, shall I go to New York? I didn't. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know whether to go on to New York or whether to come back to, or where to go. So I didn't have any winter clothes, and that decided it. <laughs> I called a friend here in Los Angeles, I, a very dear friend, Sheila, Sheila Healy. And I said, Sheila, I'm coming to L.A. Um, she said, I'll pick you up. You can stay with me. And uh, so that's the way it worked. There was a time in Los Angeles that you were involved with a group of women and women artists like Via oh, Selman. That, oh, yes. It was a, um, yeah. You it want was to talk a, about that? That was a Shall I read time. you the, the list just yes. <laughs> to get it on the record? <clears throat> Alexis Smith. Yes, that was our group. Susan <laughs> Teitelman. Yeah. Via Selman. June Wayne. No, Joy June Wayne wasn't in our group. Oh. No. No. Joyce Kozlov? 
No. 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 Joyce was uh, a good friend. Marco no. Itamitsu? Marco, yes. Marco. It was Marco Alex, Alexis <laughs> and someone who was a filmmaker, Johanna Demetrakis. Oh. Johanna, do you know? Yes. Johanna was in our group. And um, Alexis and uh, there were a couple of us. Oh, and, and um, mm, Avilda Moses was also in our group. Avilda and who else? Liga? No, no Liga. Before. No, that was yeah. before Liga. Yeah, yeah. no. no Did there you, was, was the first meeting of this group in 71, is that right? I think it was 71. So were you part of the feminist movement? Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It was Joyce Kosloff who started this whole thing. Joyce came from New York, and she's, I got a thing in the mail, you know, uh, she had a, she, they were living in an apartment in Santa Monica on 11th Street and uh, it was a meeting all women artists coming and uh, oh, everybody came everybody was there or everybody I'd, you know, I'd ever met and I remember we all went around the room you know giving our name and uh, and talking about what you did. And I remember it came my, my turn and I said, Luchita Mulliken, painter, and uh, June Wayne from across the room said, Luchita what? <laughs> Luchita what? <laughs> back, Ooh, to, Luchita back, to, you know, back to Hurtado. <laughs> <laughs> Luchita Hurtado, sorry. <laughs> So June was part of the group for a while? Oh, or? no. No, June, you see, these, this big, uh, it was uh, many people. Uh -huh. And oh, we broke up into small groups, uh -huh. you see. June was way across town. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, it was Miriam Shapiro and everybody, you know. Well, Judy, that was during the time that, that it was the, the movement was so prevalent at CalArts. Wasn't that when Mimi Shapiro exactly, was teaching out exactly. there? Exactly, yeah. and they did the women's house. And Judy and Chicago. Judy, and Judy and Me, Mimi. Me, Judy Garowitz. Mimi and, and yeah. Judy and that whole group. And then the women's building came mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. And then that whole thing, you know, it was. But the small groups were, uh, went on for years. And we still, you know, you know someone else who's, who was in that group? I'm forgetting, Barbara Haskell. Uh -huh, right. Barbara, Barbara yeah. was, was part of our group, yeah. Huh. Boy, that was some group. Yeah, that was an interesting group. How long did it last? Well, it went on for, a as I say, years. Yeah. Years, and then Barbara left. She went to New York, and, uh, and we still met, you know. And then Marco took off and went back to Japan. And What did you talk about in your meetings? Oh, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's highly classified. <laughs> Did you share your art with the other artists? Of course. I mean, for instance, you know, I've all, before, um, I always sort of didn't share my, my art too much, you know. I didn't talk about my art, and I would face my paintings to the wall. And um, afterwards, after, you know, it was, I would be very relaxed about my art. I was uptight about it. And it did help. It did help. Was the reason, do you think, because your husband was... Yes. Okay. It's yes. the usual, yes. yeah. Because yes. yes. I'm always curious about yes. husband and wife yes. artists, you know? Yes. How does that work with the dynamics? Well, it's, 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 it's not... Uh, you know, Lee um, encouraged me no end, but it, it was still, you know, um, I, it's hard to explain how you, what you feel about this, you know, you, you, you don't, I don't know. Yeah. But you were never resentful about the fact that no, you no, wouldn't, no, your, no, your no, career No, quite the contrary. Stopped. I felt, you know, that that I, I admired Lee's work so much that all my energy mm -hmm. went towards 
his his work too. I mean, I w I I was very and him, I w yeah. and him, him yeah. and his work. Yeah. And it was very difficult for me to accept that I yeah. too was working and could work and and etc. Besides, you know, not including Lee, who are your favorite painters? <laughs> Well, I married. I married to two of them. You know, I married oh, okay. Paulin. Maybe I, I think Paulin. Paulin was a pretty extraordinary painter. Maybe I should and qualify um, that by saying not including husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Paulin and Lee, I think, were outstanding. Well, um, I, I, you know, I, I admired Rothko. I was absolutely one of my favorites. Rothko was a very good friend. Was he a nice awesome. man? He was a wonderful man. Yeah. I think it would be fun and enlightening if, if we mentioned a few names and just have you give a very brief remembrance of them. Because your, the, your acquaintances, your friends, it's like yeah. a who's who in American art, in American literature, too. Uh, would that be something we could do? Just some, some brief remembrance? Uh, yeah. Samu Noguchi, for instance. Well, Samu was someone very special. I loved him dearly, and he loved me, and uh, we were friends from right up to the time he died. He called me before he, he uh, well, very, very short, shortly before he died, and uh, he, he was feeling so, so well, and he was going to go uh, swimming, it, he was going to Mexico, going swimming, etc. It was in the winter, uh, already cold. And, in, you know, we were talking and he decided to go to Italy instead. Well, he went to Italy and he was uh, working on, on a, a, a piece of stone in, uh, in Italy somewhere and caught cold and went back to New York, and it developed into pneumonia and died. So, no, I, I've, I'm, I knew Isamu when I was, I met Isamu um, with, when I was married to, to, my, to the uh, journalist in New York, um, because my husband knew his sister, Eilis, and one day we were living on um, Christopher Street in New York, and uh, and he came home uh, with Eilis one one time and said uh, Eilis uh, was looking for a place to stay because uh, I don't know she, she needed a place to stay, so she stayed with us and we became very good friends. And that was the time when Isamu was in the in the camp in the Japanese camp in Texas. Right. And um, during the Second World War. During the Second World War. Yeah. And when Isamu left the camp and went back to New York, of course, one of the first people he called was Eilis. And he came over to see Eilis. And we met. And we became very good friends. And I knew him right through his entire, my entire life, practically. I was astonished to find out that uh, Noguchi is from L.A. From yeah. Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Mata. Mata. Wicked Mata. <laughs> Funny, wicked Mata. Mata. No, he's a charmer. He really is. He's like a little boy. Naughty boy. <laughs> we need to ask you about your art before we leave. Could you just tell us briefly with three or four of the paintings behind and around you, when they were done and, and something of the yes. nature of the painting? Yes. Well, um, at one point I was doing um, figures. I did many of uh, self-portraits. And then at one, at one point I decided I would uh, use letters. And I... I I did. I I would, but you couldn't you couldn't uh, see that they were letters because it was all very fast, and uh, and that's what these are. These are letters, and um, I started with 
doing a portrait that said, I am. <laughs> and I decided that that was as much me as my, as my real, you know, face and figure. And so at one point, I began then to, to write things. And it became very kind of um, magic got involved. And I decided to, uh, to cut them up and make it even more, more unlikely that you'd ever read what I had written. <laughs> yes, it is a little difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and I did I accomplished that by cutting the painting up into strips and then sewing them mm -hmm. and stretching them on the, on, on the stretcher bars. Sewing see. them. You see, all these, these ah, lines are sewn pieces. See. So it, it, it's, it's really a magic piece. <laughs> All these, all these drawings, uh, the paintings that I did with uh, these uh, messages. Then... Um, now, the, the picture that's immediately behind you, Yes. are those your feet we're looking yes, at? Yes, that's, that's what I mean. My feet started it. My feet started it. And um, they're not necessarily, they become something else then, you know. They're figures, and they're not my figures. They're, they, they're something apart from me. And they're, they're mostly looking down. And it, not only the feet, but then it's just the legs, and then it's the whole body, and then it's the bodies. Yeah. I did a whole series of, of these big figure paintings. Luchito, tell, tell me about the feathers. And then the feathers. Yeah. Well, I, and also the feathers with yes, the feet. Yes, yes. The, fe the, feather, the feather for me it has always been a, a very mysterious symbol for me. It, it has, I think, the, for me it's almost a religious element in the world is a feather. It's, it's, it weighs nothing. And yet it's such an important, I think for me, a feather is, um, and here I've made a figure of feathers, and this painting I did in, in Taos, New Mexico. So this is it. What a dear you've been. <laughs> oh, Luchita, thank you.